Speaking of people who are made for this event. Yeah. Kim. Hello, Doctor. Well, they're determined, and they've got a good, solid team. How the lanes are breaking down and what adjustments are being made. Oh, Andres Gomez, si senor, the three-time PBA titleist, rips the rack. Walked in, left this building, he was $100,000 richer than the first playoff champion. And that's how he did it. Yeah. Well, he likes this building, and they've got more nicknames for him now, and Clark Shark and Shark Kent and... <laughs> <laughs> Sean Rash would like to have a piece of that as well, and he's in over 20 MPH on that one. Rhino Page in the anchor position. Yep, former U.S. Open champ right here. Lives about 10 minutes from me in Orlando, Florida. Wow, that's a weird messenger. They kind of tumbled around the 10 before. Kind of unlucky. Yeah. Where it left the premises. I did. I, I, I coined him the yourself. big nasty, and... And um, and it stuck. You should be very proud of yourself for that it's one. It's one of the few things I've done good in my life. Well, he's done that plenty of times. Wes Malat. Wow, this is the the quietest I've heard these fans ever. And that'll make some noise. 19.6 MPH and straight in the heart. You heard him say it, I just got fast. All right, Sean Rash now to keep the momentum going and set it up for the Southpaw Rhino Page. Quick shot here. Oh no, wrap around, are you not serious? Gotta have it. Well. Rhino Page can strike out for 229 and force Wes Malott to get the first strike in the 10th. If he doesn't strike on this ball, Wes just needs a mark. The building where left-handers have had some great successes. Rhino's having a solid year. Just a mark now for Malott, any mark. So they're playing for the Elias Cup in the building. We've taken it all over the city, as we like to do. Malott must mark to win. That's a mark in my book and in all books. Rack Shredder. Lumberjacks in the race to two. They're about to grab number one. He's need about four pins here, I think. I don't know. I don't know how to keep scoring this game. <laughs> I figured once he got that hit, it was over and, and because he's going to do that. You so. know what? It's over. That yeah. messenger is going to miss the 10. All is well. What, what's crazy, though, is if he leaves that on the first shot, they lose. Yep. See what he, he, you heard that. He said they're probably a little tighter, and he said, I really crammed on that one. Walter Ray. Yeah. Yes, sir. Back to back jacks. For Walter Ray Williams Jr., one-handed. He doesn't need two hands when he can stay right at second arrow. He's still great at doing that. Made the show in Jonesboro. That was, of course, a big day for Norm Duke. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, slow enough to get it to come around the corner and put a great touch on that shot. Johnny Petragoli or Randy Peterson in the booth here. Can you hear me, Johnny? Yes, Randy, I can hear you. What uh, adjustments did you have to make going from the left lane to the right lane, Johnny? Well, the right lane is a better lane than the left lane. And uh, we were hoping to get by game one because we knew we would have an advantage in game two. He did. Absolutely smothered the seven pin. 
justifying the move made as both the four and five bowlers strike for the Lumberjacks. <laughs> Fathead that says it all is trying to pound down the Brooklyn Styles. The Lumberjacks won the first game and they're riding three strikes in a row here. Make it four. Make it four. Pick it out, baby. Pick it out. Did he pick? Uh, yeah, I think I see a pick. And he does. I'll tell you what. I... What was that about the left lane being tougher? Yeah, these guys figured it out, and they've done it with ball roll. Okay, so soft enough, hand up the back to get the ball to read the lane surface. And I wonder how they feel about it with the two teams that are still to follow. Well, the good news is he only threw four shots. Gomez, you did not get the AJ. The officially now trip four nine is the AJ Chapman. Yeah, he only got the AJ part. And on the lane that they were supposed to do really well on, they have not. And Johnny Petraglia just a few minutes ago told Randy, "I think we're going to win this game. We're going to hit the pocket." And unfortunately, they have only three strikes in seven frames. They are in some serious trouble here. Well, Chris Prather could be called a 15-yard penalty for piling on if he drops a sixth straight strike here. A personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Well, he got that one in, and it, it just looked like it hit a sheet of black ice as it stayed on line to the pocket. Well, this will end it right here with a strike. Yes! Oh! Sliced and diced!